my dear postgraduate students hope you are all doing fine the class for the day is autopsy and the gross pathology of the lung with the feedback from the students i have managed to give an imperceptible blend of the technical autopsy and the pathological findings in lung lesions hope it will deliver the goods starting with a quote money is not the most important thing in our life our last breath is i search for some quotes related to breathing and respiration when we talk about the lung what is to be opened up first is the trachea surprisingly this is a posterior view and the trachea is open from behind probably not to break the cartilage or not to have a hindrance in the form of a higher bone as we go higher up in certain cases this might be mandatory when the pathology can be located higher up as in the hypopharynx so let us have this in mind it is not only the trachea and the bronchi but also the larynx and pharynx that we should have in mind when we do the dissection having opened up i am able to trace it down to the lungs in the form of bronchi and the rings of the cartilage are reflected over here it might be important in the case of a left heart failure as i shall be showing also you should remember that the lung is opened as pages of a book as i had explained earlier there are two methods of opening the lung one from the periphery to the hilum two from the hilum along the tracheobronchial tree to the periphery aspirations are not always good in life so this is a case of an aspiration pneumonia and on opening up you people are able to find the pink frothy sputum which in turn is reflected in the histology as the heart failure cells or the pigment laden macrophages one of our fundamental undergraduate slides this is what i had been telling rather not me ludwig has been saying as the methods of opening the lung one will be in the pages of a book pattern and another one will be from the hilum to the periphery along the tracheobronchial tree whatever said and done you find that when the lung is being removed there should be no laceration or damage because many a diagnosis can be missed by this method secondly i have told you that the damage to the lung through the broken ribs should be avoided so also the damage to the hands of the prosector who is doing the autopsy and the lungs are stored above the freezing point for a few days these words are extremely good above the freezing point look at the analytical ability of the pathologist or the technologist then probably they knew that the ice was having a larger volume than water and it would lead to a rupture of the organ amazing analysis we have seen the range of weight some of us have got a big heart and then the lungs per se 450 to 550 grams we are safe enough heart okay 275 to 325 always remember that the males will be having 
a larger and a more generous heart. The anatomical intricacies and precision are amazing. The pathologist need not be so very perfect as the anatomist or the surgeon. But yet, have a look at this pleura. There can be a cervical pleura, diaphragmatic pleura, costal pleura, mediastinal. I did not know it. Thanks to you people, I am learning pathology. My dear pleura, how are you? Are you transparent, translucent, opaque, adherent, patchy, yellowish, or hemorrhagic? Each of this has got a meaning. Transparent as it is usually seen. We can see the underlying lung. Translucent, when there is going to be some amount of inflammation. Opaque, when there is addition. Adherent, again, it can be focal or it can be encompassed. Patchy, as in the case of an underlying pneumonia or a lung abscess. Yellowish, or greenish, staphylococcal or pseudomonas, and hemorrhagic as in the case of uremia. Thanks to Grace Anatomy and the references quoted over here, this is the bronchopulmonary segment. Again, the bronchopulmonary segment might not be asked as the question for us, but I have unraveled a beautiful way of identifying and describing them thanks to Wikipedia and the other sources. Now, these are the lobes. And these, incidentally, the right and the left. I would like you people to kindly go through it. But these have been designed by an individual in such a way, so that you have got a superior lobe, a middle lobe, and a lower lobe. And so also over here. Probably it is a caudate lobe that is seen, lingula. So what happens is he has labeled them as it is apical segment. AP is apical, P is posterior, and AN is anterior, and so on it goes on. I would like you people to kindly spend some time with it because if at all you get a question like this, you can rattle off and steal the attention of the examiners. So the bronchopulmonary segments over here, this is schematic and diagrammatic, and this is the beautiful depiction by an individual, again from the Wikipedia. It is fantastic the way he has developed this nomenclature and very simply described it, worth memorizing. Now, what has happened to the lung over here? I find that at one region, I'm not able to see the lung. It has collapsed and then there is the heart that is being displayed. A collapse can happen in the case of any injury, such as a motor car accident in this case. In this case, there is an element of atelectasis, a compensatory emphysema, and also a mediastinal shift. All these will have to be looked for when you perform an autopsy. Also, please, Note that radiology I mentioned earlier is important in the armamentarium of autopsy. It can be a plain X-ray, it can be a contrast X-ray, it can be spectroscopy, and a lot of other terminologies have been given, a bronchogram, etc. So these we should be familiar with. And this again is a contrast X-ray. As I had mentioned earlier, it can be used for the arteries, for the veins. Both of them have got a similar contrast medium, namely barium gelatin. Thanks to Ludwig for the picture. A nice quote. You cannot sing someone else's end of the boat and still keep your own afloat. Maybe it pertains to the individual or a diagnostic center or whatsoever. Atelectasis is one of the important pathology. As I had mentioned here, there are different ways of classifying them. It can be acquired, it can be congenital. It can be bilateral, it can be segmental. It can be adult, it can be infantile. So in this case, it is looking almost liver-like. There is no expansion and 
obviously if this segment of the lung is put in water it will sink one of the ways of making a diagnosis and look at the white patch over here this is normal and here there is a absolutely no lung at all probably forcing the heart and the other lung to shift towards this side this is yet another specimen of an acquired atelectasis there are many diseases which we should be having in mind regarding the atelectasis again of course i would rather sing trying to be different rather than stay afloat like everyone else Incidentally, I would like you students to kindly go to the playlist in the YouTube channel, which is the key to all your details. There are more than 300 classes. You people will not know what to read, what not to. Go to the playlist. It gives you all the details, page by page, chapter by chapter. regarding the inflation or the perfusion of the lung there are indications for it one is transplantation so this is a fresh lung that is being inflated before being transplanted also the technique is used in autopsy as well as the mounting of the specimens nobody expects a lung to be like this after all it is a collapsed balloon but see how beautifully the air spaces are being depicted that is because of the inflation and the fixation can be done in 10 percent formulae for about two to three days and two liters of fluid will be required and this is the story of the pink puffer and the blue bloat beautiful sketches which have shown us everything please correct me if i am wrong I am able to see the ribs over here. The patient is leaning forward. There is a bursting breathing that could be seen. The sternocleidomastoid muscles have been brought into action. And the patient is gasping for breath. Classical features of emphysema. The other person also having a COPD is more obese. And I can see the bluish tinge. Having again a difficulty in inspiration. So this is a case of a bronchitis. And this incidentally, the entire lung inflated along with the air spaces being displayed, being called the guff went to earth section. And the microtome that is used for it is the sledge microtome. And what are the gross features as such? See it gradually being expanded. And the patient has got a barrel-shaped chest. There is an increase in the anterior posterior diameter. All the other features I had mentioned will be there. Apart from that, you'll be finding that going to loss of elasticity, there will be the impression of the ribs that will be seen. And if you are allowed to touch it, it would be feathery to feel and pillowy to touch. The lungs are enlarged and they also occupy a part of the neck. So this is one description that I had given when I was an undergraduate student. When I stop struggling, I float. It is the law. And this incidentally is a digital picture. See how beautifully they have drawn a picture of an emphysema using the digital media. ARDS and hyaline membrane disease. So this is in the adult. I find the adult respiratory distress syndrome. You people can go back and read up both my notes as well as Robin's. And this is a case of a hyaline membrane disease where it is red consolidated, almost liver-like in consistency. And either of them or part of them might sink under the water. COVID-19 was posting a similar picture and be having this in mind, it might be a question for us. And one of the features was it the hyaline membrane and another one was the thrombus. Pathogenesis, you people can read up. And please do remember, playlist in YouTube is the key. Go back to playlist. 
pneumonia. Pneumonia is defined as the inflammation of the lung parenchyma. The stories are extensive. I will not be going into them. The methods of classification, etc. This, of course, is a lobar pneumonia involving the entire lobe. Whereas here, I am seeing patchy areas of consolidation, namely the bronchopneumonia. Looks like an undergraduate question, which the postgraduates will not answer. What is the definition? What is the classification? What are the stages? The timing for it? What are the differences again? The causes for it? Complications? So on and so forth. And with a beautiful tabular column, I had explained it in my classes on rats. And this incidentally, so there are multiple patchy areas over here. Sometimes you can police this entire lobe is almost becoming consolidated. A case of tuberculosis bronchopneumonia. The lung has no limits. Look at it. All are pathological. They are not normal. But what is the difference between them? So you find a plethora of pictures and an extreme spectrum that is seen. I'm not going to divulge the diagnosis. Find it out for yourselves. Incidentally, what is the difference between an abscess and a cavity and a bronchiectasis? So this again is a beautiful one. Again, from a renal transplant patient who has developed tuberculosis. So anywhere you touch, you find that there is a caseous necrosis and these are the intestine and the trachea being opened up and the other parent came. Incidentally, this was the original lung wherein there is a cavitation and then patchy areas of consolidation. Now, there is a question for you people. Why does the lung have a cavity whereas the other organs with tuberculosis do not have. The answer is given, rats. Barium sulfate we had mentioned earlier is used for fixation of the lung. And here you find that these are the areas of permeation of the fixative, which is helping the organ to stay fixed and inflate. And there are series of fixation cascades. Go back to Ludwig, he'll be giving you but for the time being, remember that barium sulfate perfusion technique is used for lung fixation. A time can be nearly three days. Bronchiectasis, a permanent irreversible dilatation of the bronchial tree, distilled to the second degree of division because the first two divisions are supported by cartilage. Again, I promised I will not be going into the theory given in rats. And what are the different types of bronchiectasis? What are the congenital causes? acquired causes, etc. And you people will be able to see it. This is a bronchogram that is displaying the distended sections and there can be a three layer sputum classically. Those days clinical diagnosis used to be made. Nowadays, even with a contrast X-ray, we are doubtful. And what is the difference between this and this? This I find that the surface is ragged and probably it is more of infection in etiology, there is an area of congestion that I can see. Probably this is an area of a red infarct in the lung. Whereas here, they are smooth, regular, glistening. So the difference is, okay. as I mentioned this, default. Go to playlist always. This particular series of pictures is regarding the vascular pathology. So there can be something common and uncommon. What are the types of obstruction that you people can have? So this is a blood vessel. There is a major trunk over here and it divides. So when the obstruction is towards the periphery, towards the middle and at the hilum, which one will be giving manifestations of a disease? As it is towards the periphery, there is no space for collaterals. This will be needing to a definite infarct. If it is going to be an agonal thrombus as a saddle thrombus, there will be instantaneous death. No manifestations will be there. If it is going to be in the middle, there is a chance of a collateral circulation and lung has got a dual systemic circulation, the pulmonary and the systemic. As a result of which you find there can be better collaterals and little chance for it. So please have this in mind. Given in your chapter on in fact, in Robins, as well as the circulatory disturbances and in my rats. 
Amazing. What are we seeing over here? And what is the difference between a conidia, a sporangium, and a hyphae? They are all different things. Probably if you go to your school books, you'll be able to see them. But what we are seeing over here is an entire cavity is being occupied by a tangled mass of hyphae and conidia. This usually happens in a cultured medium. We will not be seeing it in a pathological tissue. And this incidentally is a lung cavity, a healed abscess cavity, etc., wherein the aspergillus is able to grow as a saprophyte. So it is a kind of a relation to symbiotic relationship between the organism and the host. This is typically called as a coconut tree appearance. When you see a coconut tree from above, this will have this radiating appearance. Another one which was quite important in the days of the HIV. And for all this, you'll be finding fresh incisions will be needed. And this is a parasite, almost similar to the amoeba, which has got a cycle and which can divide by binary fish. But it thrives in the immunosuppressed host. Pneumocystis carinii. There are three different specimens, no diagnosis on the screen. You find there are, yes. in one I'm able to see, as I told you, an area of congestion. Probably this is an inflammatory etiology that is evoking this. In the second one, I find that there are small millet seed-like deposits at equal intervals. So this is a case of a miliary tuberculosis. Third one, there can be tumor deposits also. This is a radiological, a pathological, and a clinical challenge. In some patients, we shall be seeing this, just this, beautiful. It is as though you have done a cast of the bronchial tree. And in some cases, I find that the lung will be hyperinflated, but there are no bullae that can be seen. This is a histological picture of it. The normal cartilage is over here, but then the wall is filled with the inflammatory infiltrate. There is a mucus plug that can be seen. Last but not the least, there can be charcot laden crystals. They are all features of asthma, bronchial asthma, and this is a case of death from status asthmaticus. Always in lung pathology, things will be different. Here I find that the lung is almost black in color. There are also some cavities that could be seen. So what is it? And the patient is also having this kind of a crippling disorder. And when it is being examined, we can see something like this. So these can be a case of coal workers pneumoconiosis, or sometimes it can be asbestosis. And the syndrome itself is called as Kaplan syndrome, which can occur in pneumoconiosis. And instead of the black dots that we see, we'll be finding a jet black ink-like material that comes out of the bisected lung. A case of coal workers pneumoconiosis. I would like you people to kindly explain or describe. Such specimens are likely to be kept for it is not the diagnosis that matters, your points of identification and how you describe them. And both of them are obviously malignancies. But what is the classical difference between them? And both of them are bronchogenic carcinoma. So in one, I find that it is well circumscribed, though it is irregular at the periphery. Whereas in another, if I were to put in a bronchoscope or rather the pulmonologist does it, he will not be able to find anything. But when the other investigations are done and the lung is divided or bisected, you find that there is a collar-like or a sleeve-like pattern. This can happen in a small cell carcinoma. This can happen in a bronchogenic carcinoma. So what are the different patterns of distribution of the lung tumors? You people should know. Go back to bronchogenic carcinoma. And here again, I find the entire lung is being encompassed 
it can be either patchy or here it is the entire case that has surrounded the lung, preventing it from expanding a case of a mesothelium. And this again is a different picture. When the clinician takes a next day, he finds that there are multiple shadows, what is being described as a cannonball appearance. Typical of metastasis of the lung. In fact, it is a challenge for us to make a primary or a secondary diagnosis in lung cancers. Whether you breathe or not, you must read. Robbins, Ludwig, Autosophia, Langeva, and my humblest request, Rats in Pathology. Please go to playlist in YouTube. That is going to be your key. May my last breath be drawn through a pipe and exhaled in a jest. I hope I'll be happy when I breathe my last, when the students have got my delivery. Thank you.